Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky with another powerful point to ponder. Blessings upon you. Thank you for joining us for another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Yesterday, we began our series on how to survive a storm. And we define a storm as troubles and problems that come into our life, either through evil or error that blows us away from where we ideally want to be. We have a goal of being somewhere, achieving something. We have a goal for our finances. We have a goal for our vocations and professions. We have a goal for our family. A storm comes and blows us away, blows us off course. That's a storm. And they are inevitable and they are impartial. They come into every life. Everyone experiences what Lena Horne sung about, and that is stormy weather. Our goal this week is to help you understand how to survive your storm. Now, when it comes to storms, let's take, for example, the storm that our, our world is in uh, concerning the COVID-19 virus, this pandemic that has shut everything down. You've got the CDC who can give you information, Center on Disease Control, they can give you information on how to deal with disease, disease. But only God who is in control of the CDC, which is not center of control, center of disease control, but center of disciples control. Only God who controls disciples control can help you, can help you to deal with dis-ease. Now, it seems like I'm saying the same thing, but I'm not. Disease is physical, disease. But dis-ease, not being at ease with the disease is emotional. Storms are physical, but our emotional response to the storm or our dis-ease, our lack of ease, our peace about the storm is what God wants to address. Now there's a story, as I said, we're gonna look at some Christians who, and people of God who had to go through a storm and how they endured it. And one of the great storm st stories is the story that is found in Mark chapter four, verses 35 through 41. And this is a storm that Jesus and his disciples experienced. It reads, and the same day when evening was come, he said unto, his, unto them, let us pass over onto the other side. And when they had Sent when he when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great, great storm. That word "great" is the Greek word "seismos," from which we get our English word "seismograph." What is a seismograph? A seismograph is an instrument used to measure the intensity of an earthquake. So this was a great seismographic storm, storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, Jesus, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and saith, uh, sent unto the sea, peace be still. So though there are two things Jesus did. He rebuked the wind. And then after he spoke to the wind, he spoke to the sea and said, peace. And he says to the wind, peace. And he says to the sea, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. And he saith unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared. Now, what I want you to understand is this, is that both Jesus and his disciples are in the same storm. However, they don't respond the same way. Jesus responds to the storm in faith. The disciples respond to the storm in fear. 
And when you're in a storm, you will either respond by faith or you will respond by fear. Now, how we respond to our storms determines whether or not we will have peace or if we will have panic. The disciples have panic. Jesus has peace, so much peace that he is actually asleep during a great storm. Now, storms are going to come and, and um, they are impartial. These disciples are in a storm not because they are outside the will of God and you're not necessarily in your storm. Some storms come because of sin, but many storms come not because we are outside the will of God, but because we are inside the will of God. Remember what the, the scripture says in verse 35. And the same day when evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. So they're in the storm because Jesus said to them, let's get in the boat and let's pass over unto the other side. Now, did Jesus know there was a storm that was going to come? I think Jesus knew there was a storm that was going to come. Then if Jesus knew there was a storm that was going to come, why did Jesus say, let's not get in the boat yet? Well, I think that God sometimes allows us to have storms because we learn more about God and ourselves and develop our faith sometimes more in a storm than we do in sunny weather. That's the fact. Now, here's what you have to remember about your storm. And I think you can see this. I'm gonna give you four C words and you just kind of write them down because you can see this in this storm story. And this these four C words, I think, help determine whether or not you will have peace or whether you will have panic in the midst of your storm. Whether you will be at dis-ease or at ease in the midst of your storm. The first C word is this, and that is covenant. When you're in a storm, never forget the covenant you have with God. This is why they should not have panicked. This is why the disciples should not have been tripping out in the middle of the storm, because of what verse 35 says, let us pass over. And the same day when the evening would come, evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over on the other side. Now, Jesus didn't say that as they were passing over, they would not experience a storm. But he did say, let us pass over to the other side, which means they're going to get not only through it, but they're going to get beyond it. They're going to get to the other side. And what should give you peace is the assurance that Jesus is in covenant with you and is going to get you to the other side of your storm. Notice he said, let us pass over. He did not say, let us go under. He said, let us pass over. And if God said, we're going to pass over, look, don't trip out. I don't care what storm you're in, you're going to get beyond the storm. You can get through anything if you know a better day's coming. It is only when you let the devil convince you that your present situation is permanent and nothing's going to change that you want to jump into the water and drown. So remember, first C word, covenant. Second C word, closeness. Closeness. Jesus was in the boat with them. He was in the boat with them. And if you're in a storm, never forget that Jesus is in the boat with you. There's a little, put, put the, I want you to look at these verses again. Look, if you will, at verse 35. Let's look at that again. If you, you'll see them, put this on the screen. It says, and the same day when evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when he had, they had, had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ships and there arose also with him other little ships and there was a great storm of wind and the wee waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. In other words, <laughs> before Jesus says, peace be still, they're experiencing a miracle already because the water had filled up the ship. Now what happens when it's okay if, if you're in a boat and the water's on the outside of the boat, but what happens when the water gets on the inside of the boat? The boat goes down. This boat should have gone down a long time ago. It should have gone down hours earlier, but it didn't go down. And when you think about the storm that you have been through, the fact that you have not gone under 
emotionally, psychologically, that you still know the two plus two is four, you still know your name, you're still functioning, when you consider the storm that you've been through, that is a sign that God is with you because without the presence of God, your boat would have gone down a long time ago. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse three says this, you keep, you will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stead, are steadfast because they trust in you. Remember the covenant. We're going to the other side. Remember the closeness. Jesus is with me. God is with me because I should have been under a long time ago. Third C word, concern. Remember God's concern. They, these disciples did everything wrong everything wrong. They panicked. They didn't have peace. They had fear. They didn't have faith. They were tripping and they were not trusting. They did everything wrong. But the only thing they did right was they took their concerns to Jesus. They woke up Jesus and they said, Lord, do you care that we perish? And Jesus woke up. Now, please notice what woke Jesus up. The wind didn't wake him up. The waves didn't wake him up. I would have been sick. I remember Barnetta and I, my wife and I went to the Bahamas and we decided to get on one of these little boats these out in the Bahamas in the ocean. And them waves, honey, I was sick as a dog. Jesus should have been sick, but notice what Jesus was doing. Jesus was asleep and the waves didn't wake him up and the water didn't wake him up, but the disciples woke Jesus up because Jesus was concerned. And what gets you through your storm is not only that you got a covenant with God, I'm gonna get to the other side, and not only the closeness of God, he's in the boat, that's why the boat's not going down. And not only that, but God is concerned. He woke up for me. He, he, nothing could wake up Jesus but the concerns of the disciples. And then finally, what gets you through a storm? Fourth C word, you got it? Covenant, closeness, concern, and here it is, control. God is in control of the storm. Jesus speaks to that storm and says, to the winds, peace. To the waves, be still. And they obeyed him because God is in control of your storm. And we see in this what this this story, what I told you yesterday, that that storms are inevitable. They will come. They are impartial. They come to disciples like Peter, James, and John when you're in the will of God. When Jesus tells you to get in the boat, you're doing what God tells you to do and you're in the midst of a storm because they are impartial. They are inevitable. They are unpredictable. I don't think those disciples would have gotten that boat if they had known it was a storm. They would say, wait a minute, Jesus, it's going to be a storm and we never know when a storm is going to come. But remember what I told you yesterday, they're temporary. Eventually, God will say, peace be still, and there will be great calm on the outside of you. But until then, while you're in the storm, God wants you to have great calm on the inside of you. And God will give you that great calm when you remember covenant, closeness, concern, and God is in control. That's what peace is. Let me tell you what peace is. Christian peace is the assurance that in all of life's vicissitudes, God is in control. But I've got cancer, God is in control. I've got COVID-19, God is in control. God is in control. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. And help us in the midst of our storms to have peace and not panic, faith and not fear. Help us trust and not trip. This storm will pass. Thank you for your covenant. 
Thank you for your closeness. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for your control. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me for another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, consider becoming a part of the St. Stephen Church family. Email us at newstart, newstart at sscline.org. Thank you for being with me. Peace and blessings to you. You'll get through the, you will get through this storm. You've done it. God has gotten you through before. You'll get through again. But until then, we'll pick up on this again tomorrow. But until then, remember, during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane. If you can, stay home. Peace and blessings.